Hello again, students, and welcome to week two of our capstone course at Arizona Christian University. By the way, you did a good job with your initial postings and your responses to each other last week um, in our week one. I especially enjoyed reading the posts, which included additional uh, uh, references or scripture passages. And good job on um, posting those references at the end of your posting. Um, I appreciated that. Be sure to cite those using APA format if you do use additional resources. So this week we're going to be studying and writing an employee policy handbook. This is an important tool for any corporation which is employing other, um, other humans other than just themselves or consultants. And so this is a guide. The employee policy handbook is a guide, especially during times when um, employee behavior might be um, uh, questionable or um, uh, someone has a question about um, what they're supposed to do. The Employee Policy Handbook really does guide the, the organization and the employee through those kinds of, of situations. And many corporations now require new employees to sign that handbook saying they not only have received it but they understand it and that they choose to um, willingly abide by the tenets within the, the policy handbook. So um, they are committed to that during the for the duration of their employee at the organization. This handbook is usually broad in its perspective, but often is very specific when addressing the particulars of a corporate policy. Each corporation must shape their policy handbook according to their own organization, its policies, and then even the industry in which they work. For example, the construction industry, I think of OSHA regulations, which um, might be in, included in the handbook as the employee must follow them. So it's vital that human resource professionals consult their legal department prior to publishing um, or utilizing that handbook. Um, there are some, some nuances which need to be included from the legal department in a handbook. So um, you'll want to be mindful of both the needs of your organization and the legalities of, of crafting that language. So the assignments for this second week are um, one discussion question and one assignment. I know the syllabus references a second discussion question for week two, but that one's been removed. You'll want to complete your paper, especially your assignment, using APA format and um, just as if you were going to hand it to me in person. In other words, don't let the fact that you're submitting it online deter you from including a cover page um, or a references page at the end using the APA format. And you know, when what I use um, when I'm writing a paper in APA format is Purdue OWL. And I'll include the, that information in our materials needed for success in week two so you can reference that with the link to that website. It's, um, it's an excellent resource, and it will even, um, if you type in the particulars of your, um, your reference, your resource, it will even sometimes help you um, know how to craft that and w where to put the periods, the commas, etc. So this seems like a big assignment, creating uh, an employee policy handbook, and, and it is. So I'd recommend you break it down into bite-sized pieces. This is just my thought on this. It's not a requirement at all. So identify and choose either a real organization or a fictitious one, and then when you do that, write a description of the organization to use as the handbook introduction, and then that part is done right away. Choose topics which you'll use to address. There is a list of topics in the syllabus. It's not a mandatory list. You, you do not have to include each of those, but you will want to include those that are pertinent to your organization and in that industry. You might want to refer to some real organizations which, have, which might have posted their handbooks. Some of them do. I think the state, um, state of Arizona might be required to post their handbooks online, so you'll want to look, look for that. And then be sure to include that in your references page also. So divide the topics into sections perhaps, and then um, complete the particulars of each topic in that section. Just break it down into bite-sized pieces so that it's a little more manageable. Uh, for this week, your postings will be your, your read and submit an initial post to week two discussion question one, no later than Wednesday, October 17th by 11.59 p.m., of course. Then you'll have, you'll do a response to your colleagues' postings 
Um, the first one, you'll do two responses. The first one, by Friday, the 19th, by 11.59 p.m. The second response to some of your colleagues' postings will be posted on by Sunday, the 21st, at 11.59 p.m. So, so you don't have a second discussion question, but you'll have one initial posting for discussion question one, and then two postings, responses to the postings that you read. You can respond to somebody else's response too. You don't have to respond just to their initial posting. But so you'll have one initial posting on Wednesday, one response on Friday, and one response on Sunday. In addition, then you'll be writing your assignment, your week two assignment, which is to write that policy handbook and submit that no later than Sunday, the 21st at 1159 p.m. So um, finally, just a note about the importance of being a faithful and wise manager. I loved that question last week, week one, about, about that and the scripture that goes with it. If you were a human resources manager charged with revising or writing a brand new employee policy handbook, you have the opportunity to set the ground, an ethical ground, and even a scriptural focus um, in your handbook as your organization might um, or might not allow. But you're going to be representing the organization and so you can guide upper management to um, taking an ethical stand with some of these issues. You can guide the employees who will be working for the organization and, and abiding by those policies. And I think of Joshua in the book of Joshua chapter 24. He's near the end of his life. He's marched through the desert for 40 years. He led the nation into, into the promised land and then cleared the land of all of the giants that were there who, um, whose land it wasn't. They were just living there. Um, it was God's land and the Israelites' land. And so Joshua had fulfilled all of that, and he had seen God's faithfulness throughout his life. In chapter 24, he challenges the nation as he's about to go, as he's about to die. Um, he challenges them who they would serve, the Almighty God who fulfilled all his promises, or the false gods in the land. And then Joshua takes this wonderful stand, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So never forget that when you belong to the Almighty God, through faith in Jesus Christ, you bring Jesus, you bring God into every situation, including every business situation, along with you. God has promised never to leave us nor forsake us when we belong to him. It is a mighty God we serve. So just a thought on that. And remember too, if you have a prayer request that you'd like us all to pray for, please use that prayer section in there. Or if you have a prayer request you'd like me to pray for, please feel free to email me and I will do that confidentially. So have a great week. Be sure to contact me with any questions about the assignments and we will see you next week. Thank you.